Good morning. It is currently 6.17 a.m. on Friday, June 5th, 2015. I'm Christiana Ellis, and I just got up. This is five more minutes. Yay, Friday! Um, I felt like I didn't do very much last night. Um, I guess I guess what I did was watched uh, Rear Window, the 1954 Alfred Hitchcock movie, uh, and the reason I did that is because the uh, frequently on hiatus podcast, watching 100 movies that I do with Mike, we're going to try to get back into doing that a little bit more regularly, and so the next two movies are Rear Window and a streetcar named Desire, and I kept putting off watching the movie, so we're actually planning to record that episode tonight, so if anyone wants to uh, watch that Hangout Live, we'll be doing it tonight, and so I watched Rear Window last night, and I'm going to be watching Streetcar Named Desire tonight before the podcast, um, and then I also watched the documentary that was an extra feature on the DVD. And so I think that documentary was what made the whole process take longer than, than in my head that the whole thing would take. Because I think I was imagining, okay, the movie's about two hours, and then the documentary was probably maybe an hour. And uh, so that just added up to more time in my head. So I went to bed a little bit early, but feeling like I hadn't done very much. Mm. Watching Rear Window is good. Um, I'll obviously be talking a lot more about it on the podcast, but it was a movie that I have seen before a couple of times, but not in a while. And because I had put it off, there was an element of not feeling super into it and like knowing, yeah, okay, I like that movie, but I, I don't know if I'm in the mood right now. But, oh, uh, well, I have to go ahead and get it watched so that I can do the podcast. And so I'll go ahead and watch it. But then just, like, within 30 seconds of the movie starting, I was just locked in. And uh, it, it's... There, there is something different about some of these movies that stand the test of time. Well, and, you know, I mean, as we've gone through the list... There have certainly been some movies on the list where I don't like them as much. I don't, I'm, I'm thinking back, and I'm not sure there's a lot of movies that, I don't know if there's been any that we thought were bad. Like, the, like there were movies where we're thinking, I'm not sure why this is so great that it needs to be on the top 100 American movies of all time. But I don't think there were any where we were just saying, no, this is just a, a terrible movie. Certainly Rear Window doesn't fall into either of those categories. I think I'm going to keep it relatively... Uh, I suspect by the time we get to the ed end of the list, it'll be somewhere around the same location that it is now, m you know, midway on the list. It was number 48, uh, and then 47 will be Streetcar Named Desire, which I've also seen. Um, but, you know, we're watching them again, you know, for the, the new context. And it's, it's kind of nice to get back into this project. There's so much new stuff coming out all the time that there can sometimes be a pressure, and I'm not altogether sure where that pressure comes from, but a pressure to, like, don't re-watch something or replay a game or reread a book because couldn't you read a new book? Couldn't you see a new movie instead of just re-watching something you've already seen? But I, I wonder about that sometimes because there are definitely movies and books and games and so on that you get more out of when you re-watch them. And I, I wonder if sort of a cultural default where people don't go back and revisit stories, I wonder if that's really a good thing. 
I mean, obviously it's all in moderation, right? Because I don't think we want to be like, you know, four-year-olds who just want to watch Little Mermaid, you know, four times a day, every day for months and months. Um, there's an interesting element there. I don't know. This is getting into pop PopSci, which I've really not... Uh, not my expertise, but I, I think there's an interesting blend of, uh, you know, so much of our behavior is driven by competing desires for both novelty and familiarity. And uh, those things would seem to be contradictory, and yet we do desire both of them. And so, so many of our choices are predicated on the tension between those two. All right, I'm rambling now. I've got to go uh, get ready for work. So remember, um, Mike and I will be recording for watching 100 movies tonight. And uh, I will talk to you tomorrow for five more minutes.